Hello guys and uh, welcome to this new video. So we are going today to review the fourth round of the Russian Super Final 2015 and the feature game today is Zvidlur against Rismatulin. So uh, Zvidlur is a very active person in the chess community uh, making a lot of videos um, on Chess24. Uh, I, I believe every everybody knows him or at least uh, almost everybody knows him. If you don't, check uh, Chess24 Zvidlur for some uh, great uh, videos. So the game started, Zwiedler is white, e4, c5, the Sicilian, he went knight c3, so it's a closed line of the Sicilian, a6, knight g e2, d6, g3, g6, so you see it's a, it's a, it's a, a bit of, of struggling for both players to develop the pieces at the start, so black is trying to control the center with its pawn, white is preparing for d4 to contest the center, both players have the fianchito, and uh, here, um, white uh, went uh, the move d4. So bishop g2 was playable as well, but I mean d4 is uh, is is a logical move. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop g7, bishop g2. All that is normal. Developing the pieces. Knight f6. I mean developing a piece, contesting central squares, preparing for castling. I think most of you knows that. And here, the usual move, uh, uh, I will show you the usual move and then we go back to the game. So the usual move here is castle, by example, castle, h3, knight c6, and bishop e3. Uh, there were a lot of games uh, played like that in the 70s, 80s, uh, and, and, and more, more, more lately also some players play that. But the thing is that this position very often brings to a draw. I mean, this is pretty equal, and uh, I mean, Zwiedler didn't want to go into this line because he's one and a half point out of three, and he prob probably uh, wants to win this game in order to contest uh, for the for the title. Let's remember that uh, he was uh, he's a multiple uh, Russian chess champion, and he goes with the weird move. I will call it weird, b3. So he wants to bring the bishop to b2 in order to contest the long diagonal. But this is a very unclassical way to treat those positions uh, with the double fianchito. Let's see what happened. So castle, bishop b2, this is logical. Here if you go knight c6, knight x c6, pawn x c6, pawn to e5. And when you take, queen takes, rook takes, and bishop takes. So this end game is leading to an advantage for white because of the double pawn in the center. So you cannot go knight c6 and you have to prepare that with bishop d7, so it's a very logical move. Uh, now Zwiedler is playing queen d2. So when I was watching the game live, I was pretty sure he's going to, long, to, to short castle. I mean, it looked really logical for me to short castle here because, uh, I mean, the open file, those those squares are a bit the dark squares are a bit weak so i already felt he's going to short castle and just played like a wedding move uh queen d2 so your knight c6 uh straining to tread the knights and then make a discovery it's a very typical move knight takes knight d e2 sorry so this is a this is a typical way to retreat the knight always remember you can come back on e2 and then recycle the knight and push the pawn to f4 i mean this is this is just pretty standard. Uh, black plays b5. Anyway, we have to expand the queen side, and the king didn't give the address, so better push the queen side. And here, Zwiller decided to castle long. I was surprised for two reasons. First of all, I think this is not a great move uh, because black is ready to to go for the for the attack on the queen side. Repeating myself a bit, and this king. Is going to be in trouble on c1 or, or even on b1 and i mean it doesn't feel good to do this to to play this move it's better to just go i believe a short castle but just input some move of how he could continue queen rook b1 to protect the, the bishop queen a5 undermining the fact the queen side is a bit quick just uh, just played a few move with the computer uh just to show you that white could uh try just to exchange all the pieces and go to a peaceful end game uh where the pawn on e7 here is uh 
is weak and Poland C2 as well means always close to being to, to being is is drawish. So so yeah, so long castle first fall is a strange move, and uh, of course you want to play for a win, but it's uh, it's, it's not really good move. So that's the first reason short castle was probably uh, more normal. The second reason is that uh, Rismatulin is a well-known attacking player. You can find some of his gems uh, over the internet, where over the internet where he just destroys his opponent in a classy style, and you don't want against Dennis to to long castle here. But he played this way, and I was really excited watching it live. Uh, here, Dennis plays uh, knight g4. Knight g4 is a very precise move. The thing is that this pawn on f2 that you see is really hard to defend. Like, if you just push it, which, which might seem just logical, the thing is that it's met by knight f2, and this is a fork. So you don't have only to, 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 to save the pawn, you got to protect the f2 spot. So, uh, the decided the, the best move, to play the best move, rook df1. The thing is that if you go knight f4, look at that. First of all, I never like, because I, I often lose when those three pieces are like pinned together, bishop h6 might come anytime. But here I just, uh, just went for some easy follow-up. Queen a5, knight d3. So it protects the pawn and uh, protects the bishop a bit. Pawn b4. The knight has to go to a4. It's the best square. And knight g5. And the thing is that black really has the end on the game now. This knight on a4 on a4 is a bit loose. This king is looking much better than the than the than the white king because I th I mean this pawn is still far from advancing. No, no files are open in front of the, of the king of the black king, but the c file is already wide open. So it feels that black has is uh, is ahead in in his development of the attack. So I, I believe this position is uh, is already a, 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 an advantage, um, even if if it's just a little advantage for 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 black. So he went. I mean, not not a little. I mean, an advantage. It's an advantage. So white goes rook d f one, uh, protecting the pawn. But look, the rook is not in the center anymore. It's on a kind of um, worse square. Also, the knight will be upgraded to the e5 square, which is better to have looks uh, on the king side, on the queen side, where the where the white king is sitting. It's better than f6, and this bishop for the moment, the power of the bishop is released. Released. So queen a5. Let's have a look on the a2 pawn. Pawn to h3. We get to kick the knight away. Knight f6. Well, I just said it's better on, on e5. Uh, ah, it's the other knight coming on e5. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, because if you go now with the knight on e5, it's met by pawn to f4. So in this line, it's not possible. It was possible in the previous line, but not in this one. So knight to f6. King b1. Pawn to b4. We kick the knight away. Knight to d1. Um, yes, yeah, so knight d1. I mean, uh, he's uh, looking toward the e3 spot. And here we could play rook c8, which looks logical. Uh, maybe for a lot of you, but the plan, I mean, the plan for white in a lot of positions like that, I said Bobby Fischer, is to open the h file and win the game. And um, here for black, uh, the plan is a bit the same, is to push the a pawn and open the a file. So now that the queen done the job, it just retreats, and we threat a5, a4. I mean, it's not threat, it's a plan. So knight is 3, a5, we keep our plan. White is playing f4. So white sees that the attack is maybe a bit slowish compared to the black one, but has a good control of the central square with the pawn in the center, the bishop on g2. So he decides to go for the move e5. His matulin is not afraid of that, he plays a4 opening the file, and he pretty much commits himself after e5, the move played, to sacrifice an exchange. So pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop a8, and rook takes e8. And what's amazing here is that uh, if we come back to the move e5, the computer doesn't see how strong is this exchange sacrifice. But the understanding of Denis Rismatulin in those type of position uh, 
let him understand that this crazy activity on the long diagonal with combined with the rook on the a5 while open is just going to be um, too much for Zwiedler. Here Zwiedler plays rook f4, just trying a few attempts. If you go queen d4, black can play pawn b3, pawn b3, queen a5. I'm not defending the, the knight because when you take the knight, I go queen a2, king c1, and knight h5 winning the game. Because when you take the queen move away, I'm winning. Uh, I'm winning the bishop, and then the, the 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 attack on the on the naked king is just too strong. I mean, it's not winning; it's minus two. But uh, such an activity for an exchange um, and the pawn is is just going to be too much. So attacking the knight here is uh, <coughs> is not enough because this diagonal is really mighty. This bishop on g7 when it opens up, it's just kill everything that is on the ray on the long diagonal. So queen a5 and here the king is in huge trouble. So queen d4 is not really uh, attacking the knight. So let's try queen takes b4, just winning a pawn. So now after pawn takes, pawn takes, queen a7, attacking the knight, I went uh, knight d4. The computer is giving knight c3 as the best move, uh, giving up the knight. But I mean, you don't want to do that. So I went with knight d4, but it's met by knight e4 coming, attacking a lot of squares, and it's uh, looking at the hideaway of the king. So I went queen e7. I mean, you don't have uh, a lot of uh, useful move. King a, queen a2 check, knight takes g3, a four, crook g1, knight e2 check. Just look at that. Knight takes, queen takes b2 check. The king takes, the knight comes to d3, and look at that. This is a checkmate coming on a1. I'm just showing you a typical line of what could happen and what the player calculated during the games. Because uh, in a lot of lines, um, yeah, just getting 90 to check. When the knight comes away of this long diagonal, you will have this tactic, queen takes b2, kings b2, knight d3 check. And this is the, the checkmate pattern with the bishop and the rook coming on a1. So that's the danger, and that's why in a lot of line, uh, white is losing. So Zwiller tries rook f4. He wants to, to improve his power on the, of the d4 square, and maybe to go rook c4 in some lines, covering some, uh, some stuffs. Well, it's an attempt to, to cover it. Pawn takes b3. Here, Zwiller is going to take with the a pawn. This looks to be better because you want to, 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 to keep the c1 square for the king. Though taking with the c pawn uh, was objectively better. It was met by example of a bishop h6. Here, for some reason, you cannot, uh, you, you, you better keep your rook here because the knight would be pinned and it would lead to some crazy attack with bishop f5 check. So you cannot remove the rook, but you can go rook d1. Queen a5, adding up pressure. I don't care for the rook for the moment. Knight c1, and uh, well, here uh, black is going to win back material and uh, and have a good attack on the king. So it has a good advantage, but it would have been a better way to to keep the fight on. Though, Zwiller is trying to take with the a pawn. I mean, it's not clear. It's, there is a checkmate here, um, and how to follow up the attack, but. Uh, his Matulin is choosing the best move from the computer, the first line, queen a7. Uh, it's better than queen a5, because queen a5 was a more human move, because you keep the eye on the knight. But queen a7 is a better move, because in fact you cannot take the knight. And uh, the thing is that with my queen I keep an eye on your knight, so this is a better move. Now, after bishop, he played knight d4. Uh, white played knight to d4. But after a move like bishop e5, we could have a crazy line. Knight e4, attacking the queen, we pretty much have to take it. Queen a1 check, bishop a1, and rook a1 checkmate. Just told you a couple of minutes ago, a lot of matting pattern like that. Uh, if you go king c1, 
uh, if you went king c1, oh no, you cannot, but even if the king was on c1, it was a checkmate, because it's uh, it's blocked by your queen, it's, uh, some other lines. So he went knight d4, closing this long diagonal, knight h5 now, so again, attacking the rook and unleashing the power of the bishop on the long diagonal. Now somehow, when this knight moves, the d4 knight is pinned because of the checkmate on a1. So knight d5, attacking the, the e7 pawn. Now bishop c6. Uh, bishop c6, we protect the pawn, okay? And we shred the knight. So it's a two-in-one move, and behind the, the knight, look at that, there is a rook. Uh, here it's maybe, f it's funny enough, but the best move for the computer is knight takes e7, queen e7, and rook f1. Um, but uh, white is just trailing in material, and the black uh, still has a very strong attack. We can now take the rook, and we are just going to be uh, a piece up uh, really soon. So this was absolutely winning, but uh, just just to say, it's just funny when the computer re um, decide to give a piece away to survive. So he played knight takes c6, and now I give you 10 seconds to find the final blow for black. So you can pause the video 10 seconds from now. And the final combination is queen a to check, king c1, queen a1 check, bishop takes a1, rook takes a1, king to b2, and knight to c4, or d3, double checkmate. And this was actually on the board, so that's the way it ended the game. Let's watch it once again. So knight c6, so bishop c6, knight x c6, queen a2 check, king c1 is forced, queen a1 check, bishop takes a1 is forced, rook a1 check, king b2 is forced, and knight c4 checkmate. So a very good game by Hismatulin, winning in style. Um, so it's the first win he was, he had the half a point, so he's coming back with one and a half out of four. Uh, let's watch the shocker, I would say the blunder of the day, because we had so many blunders in this tournament for the moment. And the blunder is in the game between Hyrulin and Artemiev. So here Artemiev is, is uh, so he has the black pieces, he's applying uh, some kind of pressure on the king. But uh, white should be able to escape. He plays the move rook d1. Uh, Hyrulin plays king g2. He plays queen d2 check. King h3. If you go king f3, it's met by queen e3 checkmate. So he goes king h3. Queen h6 check now. Uh, and here you can play just uh, bishop h4 or queen h5 to cover the check and it's close to being equal, especially if you go, I think queen h5 is the most logical move. But uh, our dear friend Kai Hulin went king g2. Can you now find a checkmate in two? You have five seconds from now. And so Artemiev plays rook g1 check and white resigns because after king f3, queen e3, checkmate. The things that happened in his head, I think, just to explain why it happened, he was, I mean, he had some five minutes. But here, after rook d1, king g2, if you go rook g1, check, your opponent just play king h3, and there are no checkmates, okay? So, I mean, that's the position you have on the board, and you see that after rook g1, you have king h3. The thing is that Artemiev is tricky. He's bring the queen to d2, king h3, queen h6, and after king g2, we have exactly the same position as I showed previously, just the queen is not on g5, it's on h6. 
And the big difference is that you don't have the h3 square anymore to bring your king. So rook g1 and queen e3 is the checkmate. So a big blunder again, three days in a row, three big blunders. But this one is really costly, checkmates in two moves. Uh, let's now have a look at the standings. So Artemiev, which was uh, lucky today. I mean, yesterday it was a blunder by Motila, but he really applied pressure. Today was a bit lucky, he's in the lead. Tomaszewski uh, made a draw today with uh, Vitugov. He escaped uh, in a tough position, he really defended well. So they both are in the lead, and uh, Vitugov and Korekin still sh uh, just half a point away from them. So they can really catch, catch them up, Nothing, nothing's done in this tournament. Just to say the top seed Yakovenko with 2 out of 4, he needs to win a game uh, soon in order to uh, come back. Uh, to the top. Let's watch the game for tomorrow. Artemiev leading, uh, sharing the, the first place playing against Zwiedler. So let's see how Zwiedler cop with this uh, tough loss. And uh, maybe another big game will be uh, Yakovenko against Vitugov. Yakovenko needs to do something. He has the white pieces. Maybe he has to take some risk already to come back in the tournament. Koryakin will definitely try to beat Motilov. He's 100 points, uh, 100 more points uh, in ratings. He has the white pieces, so he got to try something. And, and maybe Tomaszewski as well against Dubov. Uh, those guys need to score points. So thank you very much for watching this video. See you tomorrow for the fifth round. Bye.